Now, sometimes we act before we think, and most times it works out. At least you did what you thought was right at the time. Now, this time, however, I might have made a mistake. I saw an ad for a free mower, and I didn't even finish reading the ad because I was in such a hurry to go pick it up. 15 minutes after seeing the ad, I was at the location picking it up, but when I got at home, I got a better look at it and soon started to regret my choice to not finish reading the ad. If I had, I might have just left it alone. In today's video, we're going to look at this Craftsman branded lawnmower, and the problem is that I picked it up before realizing just how bad it actually was. You'll see what I mean here in a little bit. Now, I've already made a video about this mower, and if you want to see that video, there should be a link to it at the top of the screen or at the end of the video. But before I try and fix it, I need to give it a quick cleaning. That way I don't get dirt in places where it shouldn't be, like inside the carb, the fuel tank, or inside the engine. The other reason I need to clean it is because I need to keep my hands clean since I'm filming it. Now I don't mind getting my tools or my hands dirty while working, but getting my video equipment dirty is something I try to avoid doing. Now that may not apply to you, but it is important to me. While I'm cleaning this mower, I'm going to talk about what I've found about this mower and also the choices we make when doing this hobby and also as someone who owns a few mowers of their own. So when I see ads for free stuff, I don't typically even finish reading them. I get the address, grab my keys, wallet, and phone, and run out the door. The amount of time after posting will typically help to predict your chances for a successful pickup. The longer the time after posting reduces your chances. Now I saw this one a mere 10 minutes after posting and it was only 4 miles from me so my chances were better than average. Now when I pulled up to the location, I thought maybe I had missed it already because I didn't see it by the brick mailbox like it was in the photo. I had to drive past the house only to realize there was a car parked in front of the mower. So I pulled over, backed up, and got out, rolled it to the back of the car, and loaded up one very gross looking mower along with an almost new grass bag. The best part about the entire mower was that you can store this mower standing up, which I've never had before, but my joy was quite short lived. So if you didn't know, the handlebars can quickly unlatch and then be folded and then relatched again. The brackets for the handles doubles as feet. That way you can store the mower standing upright so it takes up a lot less room in your garage. Unfortunately, if you don't have enough oil in the engine, it's going to apparently end up as furniture because unfortunately, that's what happened to this one. If I had read the ad before leaving the house, I would have realized that there's a 99% chance this engine was broken and beyond repair. I probably would have just passed on it, although it is still worth a lot of money in parts alone. I guess if all else fails, I'll still end up with almost 20 ounces of gasoline, which at this point in today's economy is almost priceless. The only issue is that it points to the fact that they were using it when it stopped. So they might be right about its condition. So here's the deal. I'm not sure if this engine is even in working condition, but as usual, I am going to give it a quick cleaning before I dive into this project. Now I thought the last mower I worked on was dirty, but this one is much worse, just in a different way. Now after looking at the mowing deck, I'm going to give the pull rope a slight pull and see what it feels like. So there is some tension on the pull rope, which is not what I would expect if the engine was broken, so maybe there's a slim chance that it's not then. If the engine was low on oil, where did it go then? Either the engine was consuming it, and if it was, you would see smoke coming out of the muffler, or if it was leaking out of the engine, either dripping on the ground while being used or while it was stored. Either way, if you noticed any one of these issues, why would you keep using it then? Wouldn't you want to be a responsible owner and take care of it, or is it just easier to let it break down so you have a good reason to go buy a new mower then? Now there's nothing wrong if you want to buy a new mower, but it doesn't mean you have to use the old mower until it breaks to get one. It is your mower though, so I guess you'll do what you want with it, but I think it's just a bit irresponsible is all. Now the ad doesn't go into great detail as to how the engine got to run with low to no oil in it. No mention of an oil leak or other engine issues, but to be honest, with the oily mess on top of the mowing deck and even under it, it's really tough to see that there was even an issue to begin with. That's one reason why it's so important to try to keep your mower as clean as possible. Now you obviously don't need to be able to have an operation on it or be able to eat off your mower. It just needs to be free of loose debris and dirt. Now that can easily be done by using a leaf blower or even a broom and a garden hose. Just make sure you don't get water in the muffler or get the air filter wet. If you have an air compressor, that works even better, but I'd be very careful you don't get stuff in your eyes. I would use my air compressor more often. However, dirt and debris have a nasty way of getting into my eyes, even when using my safety glasses. 
Even if I filled up this engine with oil, it would be really tough to find where the leak is even coming from, so I'd rather give it a quick cleaning then fill it up with used oil and see where it's coming from. Now I can't really blame the previous owners for this mess on the mowing deck. For some reason, this particular style of mower has a really bad tendency to throw bits of grass on top of the deck. That means after each and every mow, the top of the deck will collect more and more grass clippings. Now obviously, it is recommended that you blow it off once in a while. By the looks of this one, that's never been done before, and with the deck covered in grass clippings, it's going to be hard to see if your engine is losing any oil. In fact, it was bad enough that you could have lost lots of stuff in that mess and not notice it. Now, I don't want to make too many claims, but the neighborhood I picked this mower from was very affluent, so they may have had more money than sense. Now, money doesn't ruin you as a person, but it does make you look at things a little differently. When you grow up with very little, each and every item you have seems special, not in an emotional way, but in meaning. So what do I mean by that? Now, if you make $1,000 a week and you need to buy a new TV or computer, you're aware that you have the funds to move around to make getting a new one possible. But if you only make $1,000 every month, getting a new TV or computer is not the most important thing on your mind. Keeping a roof over your head, having a safe place to sleep, and food on the table should be near the top. And if you have to take medication, that's up there as well. Oh, and if you don't have to worry about that sort of thing, just give it a little bit of time. Now to be quite honest, I really wasn't planning on cleaning the underside of the mowing deck. It really wasn't that terrible at all. But if I need to remove the engine because it might be damaged, then I want it to be just a bit cleaner, especially around the center where the bolts are located at. So at this point, I'm beginning to lose sunlight, which means we'll have to pick this back up tomorrow. But we'll get a good idea on how it looks once all that water is dried off. Now you might think it looks okay, but there are a few other places I want to try and clean, especially if we have to tear this engine down. If you haven't guessed it by now, things are a lot worse than they seem. So it's finally the next day, and it's way too bright out here to film. That means we'll have to work under some cover until the sun goes down. Now, it would be better if it was overcast, but I can't wait until that happens. As you can see, it looks 20 times better than we first saw it. It's unfortunate, but we still have to get it wet again today. The part we're going to be exposing today will be the access cover for the transmission and the pulley. Now this is quite the blessing because on the other models like this one, this cover will not come off and to clean this area, you'll have to remove the entire plastic front end and if you've never done that before, well it's not fun at all. Before we get started, I do want to show you how the cleaning went on the underside of the mowing deck. As you can see, it's a lot better than we first saw it. It's still kind of gross under the belt guard, but we'll clean that here if we get that far. The same goes for the access panel for the pulley on the transmission. Of course, there's no real need to clean this part, but since I'm here, I figured why not. I'll show you that cleaning here in a bit, but next I want to remove the top cover so we can see the recoil. After that, we'll then remove it and finally get to what I really want to show you. So why is it so important to get to the top of the engine? Well, on top of the engine is the flywheel and the fan. If the blades on the fan are clogged with grass, it could get in the way of the fan moving enough air to cool the engine. The other reason is because the cooling fins on the engine might also be covered in grass clippings, which will also prevent the engine from staying cool. If the engine overheats long enough, it could cause the engine to wear out faster. So in short, we're making sure the engine is able to keep itself cool. So is having two or more of the blades and also some of the fins blocked by grass going to destroy the engine the next time you use it? Nah, I doubt it, but keeping them clear and clean could mean an extra year or two with this mower. So how about this? A little extra bit of work could save you some money that you don't have to make or take away from a different purchase that you really want to make instead. So don't think of it as being responsible, but instead think that you're being smarter than the corporations think you are. You see, the companies that make this mower don't have it out for you as the consumer, but they don't mind if you never check the oil. They don't mind if you never clean your mower either. What happens is that you just need to replace the mower sooner than later, and they're okay with that. So for me, I want to make sure they don't get my hard-earned money quite as soon or as often as they would like. So if the mower was as clean as it is now, I'm pretty certain that the previous owner would have noticed the oil on the mowing deck and would have stopped to check the oil level in the engine. Instead, as time went by, the oil level just got lower and lower until one day there wasn't enough oil in it to do the job it's supposed to do. Now part of that job is to keep moving parts moving past each other, but for an air-cooled engine, it has one more important job that it needs to do. The oil will also help to transfer the heat the engine makes to the cooling fins, but without enough oil, it can't transfer that heat, even if the outside air happens to be very cold. Unfortunately, if that's the case, there's a very good chance that this engine just might be more broken than they thought it was. Don't worry, we're going to try and start it here in just a minute, and we'll see what it does and doesn't do. 
If you look at the sticker on the air filter cover, it says it right there. You don't have to change the oil. The problem is that even if that was the case, you still have to add oil when needed. Now, more than likely, the previous owner didn't do their part, and they figured that since oil changes are not needed, it probably means there's absolutely no maintenance they need to do. And here's the best part, I think that's what the manufacturers want you to think, that you don't need to do anything to help extend the life of your mower, and it's a real shame we've come to this point, but it's not all the manufacturer's fault. Of course, the consumer is also at fault as well. So I want you to do something for me. I want you to pretend that you're the project manager for a new mower that's coming out to market and you're in the final stages of its release. The team tells you what the projected sales revenue is going to be based on past sales numbers and other market factors. While going over the marketing, you realize that one of the key points is the fact that there are no oil changes ever for this mower. In fact, it's on the box and on the cover of the manual. You then ask the team to remove this verbiage, and this is what they tell you. Excuse me, sir. If we take off these words from the marketing, the 10-year prediction on sales for this model and the models after this one could mean a difference of over $1 million in sales. So you stand there and think about it for a minute and then say, okay, we'll keep it on there. Now this is all just fiction, but I could imagine it happening this way. The lost revenue in sales by taking off certain words from a product's packaging could impact it in ways you and I may never know. My advice is to at least change the oil once, right after your first mow. And whatever you decide to do or not do after that, well, that's up to you. So after priming the engine with some fuel, you can see that it did absolutely nothing. This is not a good start to this project at all, and in the next part, we're going to go even further than I really want to to see what's wrong with it. And I hate to spoil it for you, but it's going to end up in about 100 little pieces. Now, all in all, even if the engine turns out to be a dud, I guess we'll at least end up with a really good mowing deck with self-propel. But the worst part was that this could have been avoided if they had just checked the oil at the beginning of each mowing season. But then again, that would have been the responsible thing to do. So my question is, how often do you check your oil? Once a year, once a month, or every time you mow? As for me, I check it about three times a season, but only because my old beat-up Honda likes to burn oil, so I have to check it quite often. Thank you for watching. I really do appreciate your time here. Please feel free to ask me any questions about this project or about your own projects. And I hope to see you in the next video.